Fresh off recording the franchise's fourth 50-win season, the Edmonton Oilers enter the 2023 Stanley Cup playoffs as the hottest team in the NHL. So I'm pleased to welcome in Jack Michaels and Bob Stauffer to the panel presented by Sportsnet on location here at Boston Pizza in the Ice District. And uh, Jack, the Edmonton Oilers and the LA Kings renew acquaintances, of course, they saw each other 11 and a half months ago in the opening round of the 2022 playoffs. However, these are vastly different teams. Well, and that's really evidenced even by the season series between these two hockey clubs. I mean, L.A. took the first two, and the second of which was a game played in Los Angeles where the Oilers just had a nightmarish night on special teams. Their worst night on special teams by far all season. They were 0 for 6 on the power play. They give up 4 on the kill. But in the latter stages of that game, they had guys step up from a physical standpoint, and it was, if there is such a thing as a galvanizing loss, that was it. And the rest of the way, from early January to early April, three months' time, they lost exactly five games in regulation. And two of those victories over that stretch were over the L.A. Kings in games that, quite frankly, a year ago you would have said would have favored Los Angeles in the sense that both games, you know, scoring chances were at a premium and Edmonton was able to grind out 2 nothing and 3-1 victories, proving that if that's the way this series is played again, the Oilers can compete at the very least on even, if not better terms. So that, from an L.A. standpoint, is what has to concern the Kings is because Edmonton kind of beat them at their own game twice in the final month of the season. You know, and Jack mentioned, you know, a galvanizing moment for the team. And I think back to 1990, to February 28th, one of the most penalized games in <laughs> NHL history. And the Oilers in that game, I think, officially severed the ties with Wayne Gretzky. And they got after it. And it was awesome. At the end of the game, you had... Uh, Craig Simpson and Nessa Tekin and two on one in Marty McSorley. If you're an Oilers fan, you were stoked watching. I know. I was an Oilers fan and I loved watching it. And then you see how the game concluded uh, back on January the 9th and guys threw down and stepped up. And the other thing that happened is the Oilers do have a considerably different team than a year ago. Yep. Yes, they had Evander Kane last year. They didn't have Evander Kane in the first two games against the Kings. He had 16 hits in the two games at the end of the season. And then you add Matthias Eckholm on defense. Oh, by the way, Vincent Dehernay. Jack, what's the stat on Vincent Dehernay when he's in the lineup for Edmonton? 28-5-3. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. it's not just Eckholm on the back right. end. They've added size up and down the size, line. Size, and Nick Buke said as well, the Oilers are a much more physical team. And I think of what Dallas Aiken said to us, prior to being relieved of his duties in Anaheim at the end of the year. Edmonton can play it any way you want now. And I think that's the difference from last year. I know L.A.'s better. They got Drew Doughty. They got Mike Anderson uh, healthy. Those guys played the second most minutes of any defense pairing in the NHL. Arvidsson will be back. Big, big addition for them. We'll see on Fiala. That's a huge question mark for them. They think they've got an upgraded Corpus Allo, But in my mind, the Oilers are far more capable of playing a lot more different ways. Jack, you and Bob touched on the size on the back end for the Edmonton Oilers. How about the sizable contributions from throughout every forward in the lineup? Now, the the lineup that we saw on Thursday in the season finale against the Sharks, that's likely the lineup that we're going to see in game one of round one. All 12 forwards having double-digit goals. Yeah, three teams in the NHL this year, including Vegas and Seattle, it was actually all in the Pacific Division, had 12 forwards with double Double digit goals and that hadn't happened in the league since 93 94 and we've heard a lot about the offensive categories but again uh, a lot of great numbers for instance McDavid and Dreisaitl putting up kind of numbers along with Ryan Nugent Hopkins that we haven't seen in the league from teammates since 95 96 but I think it's the depth that was supposedly another advantage for Los Angeles last year heading into the postseason. And again, I think Edmonton has shored up that, that area. And I get the feeling when you talk with the Oilers, if you want to go back to what their foibles used to be, lack of depth in the lineup offensively, not a very strong defense, suspect goaltending. I think the Oilers are fine with that narrative because they have to be, you said, they're the hottest team in the league over an extended period of time right now, and yet so much attention, and rightfully so, is on Boston's season. It should be. But I think there's a real sleeper in the West that's somehow a sleeper with 109 points, and it's the Edmonton Oilers because I think they've addressed those issues. And Stuart Skinner, I mean, Bob mentioned Corpusalo. He's got 
theoretically a slight advantage in experience, but he's only started nine playoff games in his own right. And Stuart Skinner is a guy that all season long, whether the win-loss record has been terrific in the second half or you know just okay as it was in the first half, the save percentage and his actual numbers have basically remained the same. He's a guy that's been remarkably consistent for a guy in his first full year in the National Hockey League, and that's why he broke a rookie record held by the great Grant Fuhr. And 14-1-1 in his last 16 starts as well. Go ahead, Bob. I was just going to say, I mean, Edmonton's just simply a far deeper and far better equipped to have a deep run, in my opinion, this year. And, you know, I don't worry about Skinner because we're around him. And the players say the same thing that we see just in terms of how – balanced he is and he, you know he just doesn't seem to have too high of highs and he doesn't get too down when and the other thing he doesn't do is he doesn't get exasperated or frustrated with his teammates and he's so composed and I think of the you know the Oilers dynasty run and they had a goaltender basically from the Edmonton area who was super chill and didn't worry about stuff and stopped the next shot that mattered and I think we have a bit of that developing in Stuart Skinner so I like he's Wyatt Earp that's what he is. Kurt, he, he is Kurt Russell in Tombstone. Uh, and you know what? Next week in L.A., he'll have the suntan to match Kurt Russell's portrayal as well. He just does it like he's got a certain presence yeah. when he enters the room that never seems to leave him no matter what the scoreboard reads at the end of the night. You know, it's it's funny because I think there's been a sense of, well, you know, the Oilers, you got you, you to go through some learning experiences along the way. I don't think this year's team, if they'd played last year against L.A., I don't think that series goes more than five games. I'm going to tell you that right now. They just the, – the game one loss and the game five loss, those are one goal games, and I think they win those games now. I think the way the team played down, what do they give, in their, give up in their final seven games, six goals against in their final seven games? I, I know they didn't play necessarily the best, but they didn't sit there and, and get – you know, give up really easy goals to the opposite. There, there's, they're just and three a, of those wins were over LA and Colorado, so they weren't all gimmies, right? Like they're playing a different type of style. We saw the patience; they can play physical. And Jack talked about the the twelve, ten plus goal scores. They're also the only team in the league with two fifty goal scores and four thirty five goal scores. This team can score, but is showing just like the Oilers used to do back in the eighties when they started winning. They tighten it up as the season wore on, and we've seen that a bit with this group as well, which is not to say we don't have an immense amount of respect for what Todd McClellan can do and what some of L.A. veterans players have accomplished in their career. Jack, when it comes to this matchup, what do the Oilers need to do in order to come out on top in the opening round? Well, that's a good question. I, I think Bob's point is, is well-founded in the sense that I think you're going to get the very best that L.A. has. I just don't know whether – the talent level on Los Angeles matches Edmonton's. Again, because there is a degree of separation. If you saw off a whole bunch of other factors, there's still no sawing off McDavid Dreisaitl. L.A. is the one team that can hope to defensively with Kopitar and Philip Deneau. Those are two solid defensive-minded center iceman. Kopitar, of course, has scoring. Dano can contribute 20 goals, 50 points a year, but their strength is in their defense. The hope for L.A. is that they can basically make it a bottom six series. I still think Edmonton has the advantage if it goes that route, but the other thing I would say, and we saw it in the latter stages of the series last year, is when you get Kopitar into the deep water, minutes north of 20, McDavid and Dreisaitl have worn him down. That's what we've seen in the last year or so. And that is not disrespecting Andre Kopitar. There's not a guy in the league that McDavid and Dreisaitl haven't been able to do that to. What I've seen over the last couple of years is when McDavid and Dreisaitl are at the end of a shift or at the end of the game, they have reserves energy-wise that no one else in the NHL has, even great players like Kopitar and Deneau. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, L.A. does some things well. They, they suppress shots. You know, they're fourth in the league in shots against. They're good in the face-off circle. You know, third best face-off team, though they're not great in the face-off circle on PK. Ironically, the guy that's best in the league with 90-plus draws just got the stat handed to me today. It's Leon Dreisaitl. has got the best face-off percentage in the league. And, boy, wouldn't you love to be good on PK draws against the number one power right. play in league uh, history? Right, and, and there's always this, well, they don't call as much in the playoffs, except they did last year. Last year they did call more power plays. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I have a lot of respect for L.A., um, 
enough to say that I might do a plus one on how long I think the series would go. Like I might have said, well, plus I, one longer than most people would. Most think. Most people would think just because of how well they're coached. But I think Edmonton's got a better team, and I think Edmonton's well coached too. So you know, when I'm sitting there looking at this, you know, and I, I know the players believe in their goalie, and the team defense is dramatically improved as the season wore on, and and, and there is one wild card in this, and we don't know the health of a couple of LA 20 goal scores. And Kevin Fiala is a huge difference maker for them, and they slot him as – they play him on the third line, and he crushes third-pairing uh, matchups. We'll see when he checks into the series. Maybe it's in game one. I don't know. But he didn't well, – how many games did he miss out of the final 15 or 16? Well, he only games? played three of the last 14, I believe. So – and and here's the thing. I think both coaches like the flexibility of their lineups. Bob mentioned Kevin Fiala has been a, a third-line player for much of the year because – they feel in that role he doesn't defer, and they like that. But like Jay Woodcroft, I think Todd Wood, I think Todd McClellan keeps a little in the holster, and so I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fiala at times loaded up with Kopitar and Kempe on LA's top line to throw a wrinkle at Edmonton. Just as you know, Jay Woodcroft at some point in the series is going to throw out LA. It's an interesting chess match be between two coaches who like to think the game, who know how each other thinks, and like to stay one step ahead in that matchup as well. So this is going to be a very pragmatic series and it's going to be a really fun series it we're counting be. down the hours until game one of round one and as we always hear inside of rogers place here we go <laughs>